That's awesome. Anyway, I just want to get back to this idea of ah, people just constantly attribute to luck or situation. I'm telling you, everything we do in life, yeah, we we cannot control our birth. That's a given. Okay, that's a given. Okay, I mean you can't control that. But once you are born, okay, once you are born, you pretty much you control what friends you you hang around with. Yep. You just you decide if you want to go to school. You decide you want to go to work. You want to decide what kind of girl you want to be with. It's just all your decision. Yes, I get it. Some of your decisions not gonna make out the way you want to, but you learn from it and be better. Oh my God, yeah. it's just. It's Chris, so Chris, t- tell us your story because you, you you told it to us on the Peef. Let's talk. Give, right, give us give us give it give us a little bit of your story so we can understand right, what this looks like. Uh, let's let's all right. I'll, I'll give you guys a little background. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I'm just gonna stop this narrative that you're at a disadvantage. You just want to stay there. It doesn't work that way. Okay, I escaped from Vietnam on a boat. No family members. Okay, my my aunt just literally paid in gold bars or something like that for me to escape the reason i only escape alone is because we didn't have enough money everybody got a chance to escape my brothers got the chance to escape but they were caught and put in prison it was my turn in vietnam i'm gonna be honest every day when i wake up nobody was at home everybody was just fighting for themselves i was three or four years old wake up always alone wandering the street when i get hungry i look at the trash i eat the trash i was hungry that's all I knew. And if I stayed it out in the streets, and you're right, if I stayed out in the streets, perhaps a gang member would say, hey, you want to do this? I'll, I'll feed you. I'd probably do that. I would probably do exactly what they did, what they would tell me to do because I'm hungry. But my family, despite that we didn't have that much at all, we always focus on, hey, represent yourself well. I mean, at three or four years old, I was getting beat up if I didn't clean the house. If I didn't clean the house, I got beat up. That's three and four years old. Talk, let's talk about abuse, okay? Who didn't get abused? My dad was an alcoholic. Alcoholic. You never see him. Never see him. Six, came from a family of 16 brothers and sisters. I'm an accident. I want to be real. I'm an accident. I'm number 15. Who plans for 15 kids? Come on. Came from a family of 16 brothers and sisters. So when my aunt saw my life so bad like that out in the street, she... She, she had more money than us. She, she gave me an opportunity to come to America to get, you know, to make a better life for herself. And how do you come to America? You get on a boat. You wait for the right tide. You don't tell anybody you're about to leave and just go. You know? And I just remember when I left Vietnam, the last thing I saw when I turned around, we were out in the, out in the shore, and I just saw the light, the light tower. You know, it, it shines through, so it shows uh, the, the, you know, where boats are coming in. I remember that the moment I'm like, this is it. My life is going to change. There is no more Vietnam. And this, I left when I was four or five years old. I think it was five or four and a half, something like that. Even at that young age, you realize things have changed. You can cry. You can cry. You can just, you know, um, don't want to do this, don't want to do that. But I knew my life was going to change. I knew I didn't know what America was. I just there were other people, other kids escaping too, not just me. They didn't have families either. I had, I had, well, I had sort of like first cousin, but they were my age. And I had an uncle who had two kids that were my age, and he took care of his own family. So when we got on the boat that night, there was a huge monsoon. So much that when you land on the boat. When the monsoon hits you, the boat went like this, vertical. Okay? I thought, that's it. Got, whatever. I, how am I going to survive this? Luckily, that monsoon, here come, here's what luck is. We were chased by Viet Cong boats or, or police boat because they don't want you to escape. Luckily, the monsoon was so bad, they pulled back. We were on a fishing boat. There was like 96 people. I remember that number escaping with us. That, that's luck right there. You know, they gave up. They didn't want to chase after us. They let us go because of the monsoon. They didn't want to deal with it. We were lost out of the seas for like 20, 20 days. We didn't bring any food at all. I literally, on the boat, if you know anything about fishing boat, they have these oil tankers. They're not filled, but rain leaks in it. 
I know what it's like to drink water with oil. I still remember the smell to this day. So every time I drink a glass of water, I appreciate just water, clean water. I threw up all the time because we couldn't keep food down. I was seasick. And I remember just laying down, staring in the sky. And my mom passed away when I was young as well. And I was thinking, ah, maybe this, this is time for me to go meet my mom. I had no strength. My eyes were just open, staring up, and I couldn't eat anything at all. But some, something came within me, a drive to survive. Just, just keep on. Just whatever happened, just, just give it a try. One more push. One more, you know, mm, don't give up. And sure enough, guess what saved us? Dolphins. We were lost out of the sea. We had nowhere to go. The monsoon threw us all over. We followed the dolphins who were, you know, swimming beside our boats into an island in the middle of the Pacific, nowhere. I remember people were crying, like, oh, we're going to die. I didn't have the strength to cry at four. And we just landed on this island with black native people. We didn't know who they were. They were so nice. They gave us coconut to eat. And you know what my what was my best friend for the next three days? A bucket of clean water. That was it. I sat by there. I, still to this day, I cannot believe how good water tastes. You guys go drink wing water with oil in it. And you, you will appreciate when, when you don't have something. When the just the little things in life, you will start ap appreciating it, which I did. Anyhow, make the long story uh, short. We got stocked up in the boat, and we, we went to uh, this camp where all these people escaped, and that was in Malaysia. And then you just do p paperwork, and they take a picture of you, and they uh, send a picture of you say, hey, there's a kid right here. You want to sponsor him? And that's how I got to America. First day in America, pair of shorts, T-shirt, and a bag with my info on it. I remember stepping off the, uh, the, the airport, Syracuse, New York. Never saw snow on my, in my life. I said, what is this snow? Is, is God talking, crying? Because we, we're in spiritual back here. We see the sky is a certain color. God's cooking. I've never seen snow. But you know what? I, didn't feel, I don't know what cold is like either because in Vietnam, we're always hot and warm. And I remember walking in that house for the first time. My feet, I, didn't have, I took my flip-flop off and I walked on rug. It was the softest feeling in the whole wide world. There's no rug in Vietnam. You see, just, just the little things. And I just came in there. It was a big party. I just sat there. And I said, at four years old, I, I just thought, so this is going to be my life. And it's just so strange. Yeah, people can say, yeah, you're just an exception. I'm no exception. Okay, we all have problems. We grow up with it. But there's just got to be this mentality of just just keep going. Don't give up. Things will, things will, you know, around the corner. It might not look good, but just keep going. Anyhow, I, they had a big party. And then I remember, this is another thing I want to go by. I understand what it's like to be in a family that you are not their immediate child. You will not be loved like their immediate child. A child can see that. I remember nights waking up having nightmares because I don't know where my family is and sitting in the bed in the middle of the night all dark. I wanted to cry, but I'm like, so what's the point of crying? Who's going to get you over? I just sat there thinking, well, what, what should I do? Uh, I know these people are trying to help me, but, but I, I see how they love their kids and, 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 and pet their head and always playing on the bed. And I'm always the kid that opened the door and, and just watch how the family and I said, I'm not part of that. Because if they, if they care for me, they would invite me in. Not the kid looking at or the creak of the door say, oh, so that's how a family was. Because in Vietnam, we had a mess. My, my dad was never home. My mom passed away. We were just out in the streets all the time. But I wanted that. I wanted that family. I wanted that love. But that's okay. I get it. I get it. I, I realized, that's, you know, that's good enough. I have a family. I have a roof over my head. It's, it's not cold. I got food. That's good enough. What I need to do to be successful. Yeah, it's strange. And when you're young, you don't think like that. But when you're surviving, you got two ways. Yeah, you, you go do something bad or go do something good. But I knew school. My parents, or not parents, my family, always taught to me, whatever you do, be the best in school. Second best is no good. Second best, like Jerry Seinfeld say, is the first loser. Nobody wants to be the first loser. Hmm. And I said, I got it. 
-hmm. Second best to first loser. It's, it's, it's a funny joke, but it, it, it resonates with me. All I did was study hard. I studied really hard. I went to school, and uh, I didn't care what I looked like. And the backstory, black people, Asian people, I got discriminated. Everybody did. I got in fights. You know, we all did. You know, nobody's a saint. I remember crying in school in second grade. Because why? I remember they were writing a composition. I wanted to impress my teacher. I still remember this word. I thought the bigger words made me look better. I remember she said, write a composition about uh, your experience in America. I remember the extension to the sentence too. I said, I am very unhappy being in America. I thought the word unhappy meant that I was really, really, really happy. Mm -hmm. And I and, and the teacher said, no, you're not you. That's not the word you, you, you mean. I said, no, this is what I mean. I didn't know much English. Mm -hmm. And I cried in front of the whole class. I cried in the front of the whole class because I was frustrated. I frustrated. I embarrassed the teacher. I embarrassed myself. And I remember a little girl said, it's okay. We'll teach you. And I learned. I said, okay. I might not know these, know these words now. Give me time. Give me time. I'm going to dominate. I'm going to dominate academics. That's what I told myself. It doesn't matter how much it takes. I don't care. In the summer with kids are playing outside, I'm, I'm getting textbook. I'm reading. I'm reading ahead. I'm reading physics books. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I'm an outlier. But, but, but you can choose to do that too. Right? School, school is free. Is it not in America from K to 12? It's free. Dominate. And that's what I did. Just dominated school all the way through. Went to two foster family. The first foster family, when I got to seventh grade, straight A's, everything. I, I always wanted to do well and represent that family well. So it was very important for me to get straight A's so that way the parent, the family would not be would be proud of me and not be embarrassed of me. You see, it, we, we, we got to represent ourselves. You know, it's, it's beyond us, you know. And, and you got a name you have to represent, the people around you. It's just like Anton. If I'm going to come in this show, I, I got to represent your show and myself too. I can't go on a tangent and just <laughs> be like that show in the Peef and all that. And I just can't do that. <laughs> I just can't. Yeah, it could be funny, but you know, people, you know, when, when you, you push them a certain way, you never know what they can do. So I just kind of stay away, away. When I see that, you know, okay, they can't handle it. I'm going to stay away. Anyhow, back right. to my school. They, so listen, they, listen, I, listen, Chris, I, listen, you are absolutely awesome, bro. Before you say anything, you are absolutely the type of person that I have in my network, and I love it. I don't want to stop you from doing your thing. Hey, keep going, bro. Keep doing your thing. Keep going. I appreciate it. But but it doesn't make anybody can be like me. That's why I'm trying to tell them. It's just not hard. It, this is it. Hard work and and the word. I want to make sure, make sure I say the right word. The relentless drive to not give up. The relentless drive to not give up. You know, and that comes from let's yeah, okay, the black community. Kids don't have it. Why don't we create programs? Mentorship programs. Okay? Not, not yeah, in the ideal world, I wrote an email to you already. In the ideal world, that'd be great to have black black folks helping black folks to be successful but what if happened when those black folks are not available or not capable and you got other races are available and capable and willing you're gonna say oh you can't help us you're not black come on that makes no sense i'll take help from anywhere anywhere mm -hmm. anywhere i don't care what age you are let me hear your story i hear it's good let's go for it that's just being intelligent you know Everybody have the capability, unless you are born mentally incapable, which is the rare few. We all have brains to say, hey, that's right. That's wrong. We shouldn't do that. I don't go to church. I've never gone to church. But it, I don't have to go to church to know that thou shalt not, what do you call it, convert the, thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not kill. I don't have to. You know, you look at, well, let's, I don't want to jump away. Let's go. At, in seventh grade, when I... When the family literally said, you can't live with us anymore. I cry. Again, I cry. That's the first time I cry because I thought this family loved me. I did all I can to get straight A's for them. Why don't they want me? And I remember the father wanted me, but the mom didn't want me. 
And I remember the social worker saying, well, we have to move you uh, to another family. And I remember the first time thinking, well, maybe I should just run away. I'm like, well, where am I going to go to? Where am I going to go to? Let's give this family a try, another family a try. Again, they don't love you like the real kids. And it was just a struggle for the, as well, the second family. They treat us because they got paid for taking care of us. And I finally realized that they didn't really love us. They got money and got paid to take care of us. And that, that was their income, part of the income. I remember cleaning their house, doing the dishes, cleaning their, their stairs. I said, I'm, I'm okay with that. I got a roof on my head. That's what I'm supposed to do. Okay, nothing is free in America. You've got to work for it. I understood that and I accepted that. What I didn't accept was I remember there are times they took other kids in, not just me, other Vietnamese kids there. They were making money. <laughs> other kids there too. I remember the first day we got there, the family got in an argument with the kid because that kid did not dust their mantle. And I remember he kept crying. I remember his word. He said, you guys believe that your mantle and, and your house is more important than the people's feelings. And so they kicked him out. And throughout my life with that uh, family, from seventh grade to the time I got to college, it was just constant argument about uh, you, why, why didn't you wash the dishes? Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do that? And it was just, they were arguing about, with, with this, another Vietnamese kid that was younger than me. I remember one day I stand up, I said, Listen, you guys are an adult. You got to set example for us. How are you teaching us this? I, you know, I'm younger than you. You got to handle us better than this. And I remember thinking, when I grow up, I do not want to be like this. I would not teach, I would not treat kids like this. I told myself that. I told that this is not what you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be loving, caring. Yeah, we make mistakes, encourage them on, move them on. And it was just, it wasn't that. And so I still did well in school, 7th to 12th grade, graduated 6th in my class, post college. I was, oh, I remember college. I remember my counselor uh, called me and said, oh, so Chris, are you going to go to college? I'm like, what's college? I don't have any money to go to college. My, my, fam my foster family is not going to pay for it. I thought I was going to work, go out and work at a gas station. I didn't know anything about college. And they said, well, your grades are good. They'll give you money to go to college. I'm like, what is that? They give you money? Are you serious? And and I, I never applied for college. And that same day when all the application was was uh, due, my guidance counselor sat me down and just sent out all these applications. I, I said, any college, I don't care. <laughs> you get free, free education, I'm going for it, any college. And so I got, uh, you know, a few, a month later, I got the, my counselor called me, said, Chris, you get to go to college. I'm like, yeah, great. But, uh, and, he, and he said, you don't have to pay for it. I'm like, what? Really? They're going to give me, I don't have to pay for it. Okay, I'm going to college. I'm so excited. And on top of that, throughout middle school and high school, I worked. I thought we all did. Worked as a cat, <laughs> delivering newspaper, in, in, in the, delivering newspaper after school. It was cold early in the morning and a cash register because they weren't giving us money to the foster parent to give us zero dollar you need extra money they gave us food but they didn't give us the food we they would buy the food and every time i would take it to cook it they're like no you can't eat that you got to save that and so i'm like okay i'm hungry i gotta get i gotta make money to, to eat i gotta eat so i go and deliver newspaper in the morning early in the morning after school and uh Got a job as a cash register. I got money and I got to eat. Okay, I, I don't. I don't hate for them for it. Yeah, I'm not your kid. I don't blame. There ain't for no you. victim stories in this story <laughs> right here. You could get victim. I don't know what that word means. Throw that out. You, you, it's, it's America. You know, it's 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 a tough world out there. Survive. Just survive. Use your brain. God give everybody has a brain. Okay. And so I still remember this. I go to college. I'm so excited. It just, man, it's free education. I, I'm I'm gonna dominate academics. <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna dominate academics. I told myself that. You want to be somebody? Uh, there. Okay. There. Are, let me see. There are three ways of making money in America. You, you inherit money. Okay. You go to work. Okay. You rob somebody. <laughs> I mean. 
choose. <laughs> go to work. But in order to go to work, you got to have some kind of credential into into doing like education or, or, or in some kind of internship or be associated with people that can bring you in or something like that for them to even look at you. You know, anyhow, so we, when I got to college, I remember springtime, spring semester, I was about to come, come home, right? And I remember I get a phone call from our foster parents. We don't want you back anymore. I was 18. And I guess what my, my answer was, okay. I didn't expect that. I said, okay, they don't want me anymore. And, and I finally found out, guess what? When you're 18, income doesn't come to them anymore. It's okay. I get it. I get it. I still got my education. You know, you don't help me, I'll make it on my own. I'll ask people for help. And I remember in college, you had to leave for, in that, uh, college, you had to leave for your spring break. You cannot stay there. I literally had to go around the college and ask for people like I was homeless. I said, I'm sorry, I don't have a place to stay. Is it okay if I stay for your housing for the spring break? And I didn't, I didn't have a car. You know, I had my car broke. I had a hunk of junk. Oh my God, so many hunk of junk. It's unbelievable. It felt like a grandpa's <laughs> every night. Just beat up, just whatever money I put in there, just, just break. It's broken down. Pipes are always falling out. Made noises. The brakes. You can't. You can't. In order to stop the car, I had. I had to call American Concord. You have to hit the brake ten times before you get to the stop. Slow <laughs> it in, otherwise it won't stop. It's easy. See, I understood that, and I understood being rejected too. And I remember my friend Victor, the guy I was telling you, you just like him. He said, he said, Chris, that's it. That's how you're gonna react. I said, what am I gonna do? I still got my education. What am I do? Give up? I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I got free education. Let's dominate. Dominate academics that's all i could do okay and let's make the story a little up uh, short because i know you show other people want to come in i respect that i want other people to come in i don't want to monopolize anything i remember my uh, my sophomore year and i now that i'm in college i'm like okay i get good grades so what i got to network something came into me i got network i said well how am i going to network I want, I, and I, I talked around to all the people, I talked around friends, counselor. I said, well, I want, I want to go pre-med, but you need some kind of like uh, something in your resume if you want to go to medical school, beside academic, what else are you going to do? And the light came to me. I remember a friend said, go, go work at the, the CDC. I'm like, what's the CDC? And the, Ooh, you got to have high credential to work at the CDC. And guess what I did? This could help a lot of people. It's the simplest thing. It costs nothing at all. I sat in my dorm room thinking, ah, what should I do? Uh, I, I was, I was going to transfer from Union College, which is my initial college, down to Emory University, Atlanta, Georgia. And the reason I transferred, because that's another story, my real family came over to America. I want to come down to help them out. That was the reason. And I remember I said, okay, so I'm going to go down to Emory, and I need to get some kind of internship. And guess what I did? I looked up all the alumni who graduated from uh, Union College that worked at the CDC. Yo, this is, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Chris, hold on, Chris. Are y'all getting this gem right here? Honestly, real talk, y'all. Like, we, we just gonna be real. Where, That's where what are y'all going? going yeah, where are y'all, see, and, and, okay, so let me just say this, let me just say this before you continue. Sure. This is why y'all have to find channels and find platforms that add value to y'all life they're putting game into your sphere they're forcing you to look at things differently and taking away the excuses because he's literally about to give you a free gym that will completely change not only your life but maybe your children's life and the and the trajectory of every but it has to be intentional like you can't you can't keep subjecting yourself to these these channels that are not pouring into you and they're just taking away from you as far as all of the different things that you're supposed to be doing in order to enable yourself to be the best version of yourself you need to start looking at channels that will change your algorithm and will start recommending better content to you so that you can start leveling up yet yeah, it's cute and it's entertainment for all of that other type of stuff but when it comes to actual real value 
Are you paying attention? Go ahead, Chris. G- give us that game again. St- tell us what you did as far okay. as trying to f- go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I was like, I got to build up my resume, right? So I wrote up. I, I went down to uh, there's a, a directory at the school where it it shows it shows you like where all the people are working, and I went to find all the people all the MDs who worked at the CDC and wrote a personal letter to each and every single one that was an alumni at Union College and said, look, and just be honest with them. I said, look, I'm a sophomore in college. I'm trying to get into the medical field and I want more experience. Is there anything you can do? I'm just making it short. And unbelievably, all these people, all the MD just wrote back to me and said, come down here, come down here. Wow. We'll make a position for you. We'll make a position for you. I didn't stop there. I didn't stop there, Anton. That's it, there's more. They, they, even though they no, but they'll tell that, you that this is luck. They'll tell you that this is luck. This is not luck. You cannot. This is, make, a, this is it, intentional. They're not going to call you. Yeah, it's active, not passive stuff. Take the initiative. They wrote me back and they said, "Come down here. We'll help you out." I didn't stop there. I kept calling every day, every because one of the person who wrote back was the director for Center for of Disease Control, Dr. William Martone, the director. Got the whole of that letter, personal written letter by hand, okay. And uh, I, and he told his secretary, get this guy straight, get his connection. I didn't stop there. I called that secretary every day, every day to get her to know me. And I remember the secretary said, Chris, it's unbelievable. I cannot forget you. I don't want you to forget me. How are you going to forget me if I call you every day and say, hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm about to come to, I'm so excited to come to CDC. I'm so happy for this opportunity every day, every day, every day, just pounding at it. Okay. When I came down, eventually when I came down, I remember the, the director no, I came down and I came to the CDC and I got my own cubicle. I remember, every, I'm, mind you, I'm just a sophomore in college. Every single person came in and looked at me, looked at me, looked at me. And, and the MD said, who, who are you? Where's your credential? I'm like, no, I'm just, a, I'm just a sophomore in college. They're like, are you serious? You're unqualified for this position. You, Dr. William Martone, must love you. I said, I didn't know. I thought it's just an internship. You see, you still can do it. Mm. You see, the position he created to me mm. is supposed to be for doctors. But because the relentless drive, the whatever I had in me, he saw it. Hold I on, Chris. He- Hold on, because Nikki just said something that I think is awesome. And this is the point that I'm trying to make to everybody. And that I've been arguing over the last several weeks on multiple platforms, you need to get out of your circle. You gotta step outside of your comfort zone and talk to people that don't look like you, that may not talk like you, that come from a completely different background, that may have different experiences than you. They are going to pour into you because other people want you to win and you have to. I just gotta say this, Chris, real quick. I want You gotta align yourself with people based off of the content of their character and not the color of they, it don't matter what you look like. It don't matter where you come from. It don't matter about staying on cold. Yo, listen, if I'm on cold right now, according to how everybody else is telling me to be on cold, you not hearing this story, you don't get that gem that Chris gave you about as far as how you how you can align yourself with certain people and how you can level up and do it for free. You don't get that information. Because you're so busy trying to confine yourself into a box that you don't even know that you're hurting yourself. Open up your mind, man. Like, be open to the possibility that you can learn something from somebody that don't look like you. Everybody not trying to do you wrong. 
It's not about being on code. It's about winning. And when you win, you have options. And when you have options, you extend your network. And when you extend your network, you get more options because then you are open to the possibility of what you don't even know. You don't even know what you don't know because you so closed minded and so closed off to all of these different opportunities that's so right in front of your face and people want to help you. People want to do things for you. People want to pour into you, but you so on code that you killing your own self because you've already restricted the possibilities of what's available in your life. It's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. And then they're going to tell me that I'm lucky. It ain't got nothing to do with being lucky. It got something to be with, do with being intentional. I don't close myself off. I'm personable. I go out and I meet people every day. When I seen Chris on the platform, I couldn't wait to get him up here. Y'all need to start paying attention. Cancel, cancel culture. Cancel all of that trash that y'all subject yourself to, man. I'm telling you, it's better on this side. It's more awesome on this side. Go ahead, Chris. I just got to make that point. I just got to make that point. It's a great point. And, and just to add to that point, I'm, life is easy. People make it hard. It's really simple. You want to get someplace? Work hard for it. Don't give up. Align yourself with people who can help you. Allow them to help you. You know, um, and so, yeah, and I remember, I remember uh, talking to Dr. William Martone, and I, I also remember this between my, uh, the summer of my, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, summer of my senior year and in, in college, they had this program, it's called the HEP program, H-E-O-P, Higher Educating, Higher Education Opportunity Program. Those are for people, the, the people who had good grades but we don't have the financial means to do it. And, and, and I still remember that what they taught us. They taught us when you come to interview and when you meet people, this is how you should present yourself with. Look them in the eyes, shake with both hands. They taught us gems. Those were sweet gems that I wish that they, 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 bring, they bring back to the black community or something like that. I would love to be a part of that. I would love to help whatever kids, you know, we got to hit the kids young. Their minds are very impressionable. Hit them young. They, they, they're willing to listen to you. If they see you care, they will listen. I'll give you an example. Kids who here, who I teach English to, they won't learn it somewhere, someplace. But when they come to me, they never leave. They will cry. You pouring into other people. You still pouring into other people. You still <laughs> teaching. Are you teaching other kids? It, it, come it, on. It, it doesn't stop there. Anton, Anton. I'm, I'm 48 years old, Anton. I'm still learning. Guess what? Taking online classes at Stanford to be a poop computer programmer. I have a college oh, degree man. and an anesthesia degree. You know why? Oh, you man. know why, Anton? You got, I yeah, you got the college degree. You, you got the Listen. anesthesia degree. You becoming a computer programmer. You pouring yes. into people. You one of the one of the most phenomenal I people that I've ever met online. And people will reject you just because they think that you look differently from them. That is crazy to me. Uh, I, if that I is the, isn't the most self-sabotaging mindset that I've ever seen in my entire life. That is amazing to me. And the reason I want to take the computer program because the technology is changing. It's changing in Vietnam. People from Google, Facebook, all those big companies are going to need a liaison over here. I'm going to be the one. Yeah, bro. I'm going to be the one, but I got to learn the computer code. Isn't it? It's not hard. It's just another subject. I'm 48. Is it ever too late? Never too late. Yeah. People say you're an outlier, Chris. It's just a choice I make. It's just really a choice I make. Do you want, I want my life to be better. And when you make it, I want to, to give back to whoever wants the help. I'll get back, you know, I'll get back you know, to the, whatever people who need help. I have compassion for. I've been there. I wish I had all these people helping me when I grow, uh, when, when when I was growing up. I didn't. I didn't. And Chris, Anton, you I'm sent sure me an email. Either. You sent me an email, right? Yeah, I did. Long on, email. Let me, wait, 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 wait. let me make sure. Your Gmail. It. When did you send it? Last night. You uh, sent it last night. This morning, yeah, it's it's a different time change here. Right, so it'll right. be last night in the middle of the night for you, probably three or four in the morning. Your Gmail. <laughs> Let me make but sure. I just, I grew up. My best friend was a black friend. Okay. Wait, you said. Wait, you said you sent the last. What time? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I need to make sure I got your email. 
it's I, I sent it uh it's in your gmail you probably have hundreds and thousands of G, um, emails and nah, but i'm gonna find it give me a second okay before we continue this let me make sure what's your email address well no no no, no don't say that don't say it don't say it don't okay. say it don't say it um I'll, I'll copy and paste. I'll send you. I'll which, send you which, again right after Which this email show. address did you send it to? You know what, what email address you sent it to? The the one that you uh that you give on your show. The Anton Daniel the Gmail four one three. Oh, do I? Yes, yes. Daniel, uh, Anton Daniels four four oh one four one three at gmail dot com. All right, because I I don't. It, I don't it was know probably. If Three or four in the morning. It probably ran into your spam mail. That's how email is. I'm, hold on. It's hold just on, hold on, hold on. just some thoughts I thought that I you could digest. Sure and that... hold on, I got you. I need to make sure that I got this. But while, while we're waiting, I just go ahead, I just go like ahead. to uh, I would just like to uh, you know uh, I feel empathy as well as sympathy for single hard working single black mothers who have to work two or three jobs to try to make it for their kids i really do i really do but these kids need mentorship these kids need somebody who I, I i in my email i even said that, that listen if we get a group of black kids together young ones even take them hiking take them fishing help them do homework they will appreciate that and it's just a path that we can show them how to be better. And in their path of do well, of, of being an outstanding citizen, we're going to teach them more during the way too. I do that with my, with the kids over here too. I'll give you an example. I remember uh, last week I, I I I had a class and uh, I asked a kid to uh, say something, uh, say this phrase in English, and the kid was really struggling. And two of the kids smile. I stopped the class immediately. I posed this question to the smiler. I said, give me the reason why is it funny to, to laugh at somebody that can't pronounce something just because you know it and that person is at a disadvantage. Why is it so funny? The kid couldn't give me an answer. And I posed another question back. I said, do you want to be laughed at if you don't know something? And I continue one more word. I said, you don't know. This person, one day, you might need help from this person. Do you want this person to help you when you need it to? Since you know it right now, you help them, they will remember that. And so I was just saying that, and there was no more laughing in my class from then on. See, kids understand these gems. They do. They truly do. They just don't know better. Nobody's telling them. You know, and I mean, we want to go to the ideas of, of uh, having children out of wedlock without, you know, really studying it god I, I was a school nerd I, i'll give you a, an embarrassing story eighth grade i was no no no, no no don't don't get that story yet because i'm gonna have you no, back oh, on. no stuff not okay, not, not okay, that no one we're we gonna hold on we're gonna stop there i got okay. you i found your email uh, hold on. I, I put it put it as important but i got some stuff JR, that I like. no nope, sure. i got you I got some stuff that I want to connect with you with, um, and we gonna we gonna rock. <laughs> we gonna rock. Anton, again. I got. I got, I got great plans. I got, I got the ambiance of Zamunda. Every time I, I see this, I got great plans bro. for you. I got great plans for you. Zamunda. So we, we gonna and link up. Um, I got. I got some stuff that I want to talk to you about. I'm about to respond to your email. Um, I got. I, got, I reached out to my assistant and everything like that. So let's hold off, Chris. Let's hold off. We don't want to give no him problem. all that yet. We don't want to. I'm okay. going to respond to your email. We're going to talk offline and uh, we're going to rock with that. All right. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you later. I'm going to talk to you later. I'm, Anton, I'm, 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 thank you for having me all right, on the my show. Friend. Yep. Appreciate it, buddy. Yep. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope y'all got that game. I hope y'all got y'all level of entertainment. Um,. Y'all gonna have to come back for the rest. Y'all gonna have to come back for the rest. Me and Chris, uh, we got some things that we gonna work on. Um, shout out to Chris. Shout out to y'all, to the audience. Make sure you hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. That's the least that you can do. Um, 
gosh, that was so much game and information. If y'all not, if y'all not sharing these videos and sharing my channel with other people, that's actually that you love. So you can add, add value to their life. You selfish, you selfish. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't hit a like for YouTube algorithm, if you haven't joined the Patreon to get this video that I'm dropping this afternoon, you selfish, you selfish. Yo, let's get it. No more of this uh, dusty, dusty mentality. No more of this victim mindset. Chris just proved to y'all that it's all about intention. It's not about luck. Although I like Lucky. I like my homegirl Lucky. As far as practical information and applying this stuff into y'all life, we're going to give it to you from a balanced perspective. We're going to give y'all the entertainment. We're going to give y'all the Lapeef Let's Talk with those hard conversations. We're going to definitely jump on this platform. I'm going to give you the game and the Patreon. I'm going to give you the money. And we're going to continue to rock from there. So if you're not entertained, and if you're not, if you didn't receive your edification today, I don't know what to tell you. I gave you multiple camera angles. I gave you entertainment. I brought up my new friend, Chris, to give y'all insight into how you can level up from getting out of this victim mentality and even free information. He gave y'all a game that I usually give in my Patreon. He gave it to y'all for free on the platform. And you trying to be selfish and still live in your and wallow in your circumstances and you in a, the, the land of opportunity and freedom to do whatever you want to do. It's up to you. He literally just told y'all how he was on a banana boat drinking water and oil mix just to survive. And you're going to sit here and tell him and tell me you're going to sit here and tell me how much you. Oh, 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 poor you. Oh, feel sorry for me because I can do what I want to do. Listen, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Too much game. Too much game. I appreciate you. Too much game. We going we going I told y'all. I told y'all earlier in the week. We are going to destroy this house one brick at a time. We going to kick in the door. We going to change somebody's life one person at a time. We no longer living in these victim Olympics and I'm coming. I'm coming. 